you can remember even from the last time that you were here how challenging she still was mm -hmm. on the line. She was starting to learn quite a bit, but she was still really stiff and slow in her responses, um, kind of like moving a freight train around, and the direction changes were still a, a sticky point for her, and um, quite often she would get like really mad about it or frustrated. So the first key with a horse like this is actually to be able to move the shoulders. And so there is no amount of round penning that you can do that will teach a horse to step wide with their outside force like this. Okay. So if she cannot step over away from you like that, so over here, so she's not having to step into you. Good girl. So see the front end go away mm -hmm. and then go out on the circle. So for her, that little tiny distinction, she would, I can't, she had problems going forward as well as we know, but her dilemma with forward was from that. And so if I just had her go forward, then she would come in on the circle, if you remember, mm -hmm. and, you know, be coming over the top of you. And part of it was behavioral, but a huge part of it was just her balance. And until she was taught that she could step out and over, she didn't understand what she was meant to do. And so she would just push into the pressure because that's how she, you know, ended up choosing to respond to it. Good girl. Actually, I'm going to fix this. She does better when working. If her forelock isn't blocking her, it really does just bother her vision. And you guys, she gets all, you're going to do something that I'm not aware of. And it's like, okay, let's just put this down. <laughs> so, even when she's being ridden, I would recommend just braiding it up and putting it behind the brow band. And that way she doesn't be able to do. Oh, good. So, I wasn't expecting that, but. I'm certainly not going to make her wrong for changing direction, especially now. Mm -hmm. The whip is just to describe the space for them to move around, so I don't want them to be overreactive or worried about it. Oh, very good girl. So you see what a huge difference that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stretching forward now, her neck. So it's harder to see with uh, her mane right now. But right here, she has these really bulging uh, carotid glands, mm -hmm. and that's from being rude. Like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so the glands literally have nowhere to go. So she's just finally started in movement to stretch where those disappear. Like they deflate and inflate, deflate and inflate as she's going back and forth. But if you, when I send her around when she's not on the main side, if you just do a little bit of focus in on that, if you can catch that at mm -hmm. all, that would be super. If not, don't worry about it. It's one of those subtle things, but. Okay. But you see how if she's actually licking her lips and stuff as we're standing here talking, which is a huge difference from her being really irritated and angry. <laughs> Because she really was like mm -hmm. pretty pissed off about stuff. So, okay. welcome. Very good. And departing without, you know, an attitude about it. Good girl. Okay. And stop. to always take a step back before she turns. She does that quite well. And trot. You'll see when
when she stretches her head and neck down, that's when those glands disappear. Let's fix your mane just so it's not on both sides so we can actually see. Girl. Good. So you see even that she stepped out mm -hmm. with that outside four. So I think we've got that pretty laid in there now, which is huge, because I didn't even really do much as far as like cueing her to do it. She just did it. And trot. Trot there. There's a huge difference in her willingness to move forward. I don't have to use this physically anymore. You know, you see I'm not having to snap mm -hmm. the end of it to get her to go or actually tap her with it. She's going when I have. Good, yeah, and another beautiful step wide. Oh. 